It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a teaching tutorial Thursday, presented, of course, by DraftKings. Why is it teaching tutorial? Yeah, we know that's redundant. But it means the man, the myth, the legend, the civilian goat, Greg Cosell, is in the house. Love this series we got going with Greg, talking about each and every division in the National Football League with a season preview. He's getting a lot of hits on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Glad you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. It's always good to have Greg here. On a Thursday, we actually have a decent amount of news to get to today. And I just realized, uh, as the case may be, that I forgot to pick winners. The Spread the Word winner and the Sponsor Confirmation email winner. I did pick the YouTube winner, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. That's Llewellyn Screen. So Llewellyn, let me know who you'd like the shout-out video for. Just email me. Ross at Ross Tucker.com. I'll make up for it with the spread the word winner and sponsor confirmation email winners on Monday. For now, I want to get to Greg Cosell, but I first got to make sure all of you know how to enter to be in the best ball fantasy football draft against me and Joe Dolan. You simply go to westshorehome.com slash Ross which is where you should go anyway because they're giving out free estimates right now. And if you get a free estimate now, you'll qualify for free installation for a limited time, which is insane. Plus, you get to see what my old crappy bathtubs look like and how awesome they look now. One's just a total shower. One's a bath and a shower. Unbelievable. I still can't believe they did it one day. And I still can't believe everybody doesn't at least get the free estimate. So you can go against me and Joe in a best ball fantasy draft at DraftKings. WestShoreHome.com slash Ross. WestShoreHome.com slash Ross. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. Well, I have been waiting for this one, Greg, as have a lot of people. This series we've been doing with your previews of every division going into the 2023 season has been very well received. And now we get to the NFC East, which for some reason there's always just a little extra oomph, a little extra cachet when you're talking about the NFC East. And let's start with the Dallas Cowboys and some of the moves they've made. I don't want to ask you a leading question, Greg, but I got to tell you, I think the Cowboys are, at least on paper, from a roster standpoint, much improved. I really liked the pickups of Brandon Cooks and Stephon Gilmore. Agree or disagree? I would agree. Um, you know, this is a team, Dan Quinn, in, in the last couple of years, has played as high a percentage of cover one uh, as any team in the league. Cover one, of course, being man-to-man -man with a single high safety. And they struggled a year ago to find a corner to play opposite Trayvon Diggs. And that kind of hurt them. Uh, so now they have Stefan Gilmore, who's still a good player. He's still a cover. You know, he's still a man to man corner. That's what he's done throughout most of his career. Obviously had a couple of phenomenal years in New England. I think one year, if memory serves, he might have been the defensive player of the year. Um, so now they can play what Dan Quinn has essentially played, but they can play it better. Um, and, of course, they're making the move with Micah Parsons to essentially line him up as an on-the-ball edge defender a, a higher percentage of the time. They'll move him around, I'm sure, still, but that's essentially what his position will be as opposed to a stacked linebacker. Um, I really love the drafting in the first round of Mozzie Smith from Michigan. I think that his college tape was really, really good, and I think that he can be a force inside. Um, so defensively, I would think they'll be pretty good. You know, a couple different things here. Micah Parsons kind of came out and said he's moving at the end full time. And Dan Quinn came out and said, no, he's not, which I thought was interesting. Um, here's how I'm going to split that baby, uh, Greg. My, my guess is that 
Micah Parsons is going to be rushing in every known passing situation. I would agree. But Dan Quinn doesn't want people to kind of be teeing up on that. I think they probably did a study and realized they are so much better off when he's rushing than when he drops. I mean, Greg, when he rushes, they either double team him or he gets pressure. I mean, it's really like he's the guy that we're in those meetings we would be talking about him all week. Where is he? We're sliding to him no matter what. The right. back tips over there no matter what. You have to have that guy, in my opinion, Greg, you have to have the guy rush that the offense is worried about because then that's who they're talking about, pointing at, looking at, helping. It really opens things up for Lawrence and the other guys. Yeah, and I think your point's well taken. I would it would not surprise me if in quote unquote normal down and distance situations, depending on field location, time of game, if he is a stacked player, because don't forget, they still have Dorrance Armstrong, who played very well last year. Sam Williams was a rookie a year ago, and he played well when he got snaps. And these are defensive linemen, defensive ends. So I I tend to agree with you, but I think in clear pass rush situations. There's no question he will be an edge rusher. On the offensive side of the ball, Greg, I like the fact that they got Cooks. I think he can still play. They needed a a better number two. Now they get Cooks, and who knows? Gallup is a year removed from that ACL surgery, so Gallup might actually be able to be closer to the player he used to be. I got to be honest with you, though, Greg. I don't know what Cowboys fans are talking about. Like, They're so happy Kellen Moore is gone. We talked about this recently on the Fantasy Feast podcast with Joe Dolan. The Cowboys the last four years, Greg, second in points, second in yards, and they've had backup quarterbacks, you know, the Daltons, the Danucci's, and the Cooper Rushes playing a bunch of games. Mike McCarthy's talking about running the ball more, running the ball more. I'm a little bit nervous schematically about the Cowboys offense, even though I think their personnel is better. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Gallup, though, because, you know, we don't know exactly what their run-pass ratio will be, and your point about Kellen Moore is a very good one. This team scores points. Um, But Gallup was their boundary X, um, and that he was the single receiver to the short side of the field, almost always lining up opposite trips, three receivers to the field side. And he was a very good boundary X and he had vertical ability and he could win one-on-one and then he got hurt and he wasn't the same a year ago. If he can come back to being what he was, uh, then I think that really opens up what they can do offensively because then you have two players to the wide side of the field in Cooks and Lamb who can be used in motion. They're movement players. You can get them free access off the ball. You can run multiple route concepts because obviously when you have three receivers to one side, the route combinations are there, whereas the boundary X more often than not is running singular routes. Um, So, you know, I think that Gallup is a really important player here. The question I would have offensively is if they indeed want to run the ball at a higher percentage, Do they feel Tony Pollard is that kind of back? And I think that is a question mark. Great player. You know, he's a really explosive player. But I think, Ross, you would probably agree that we don't know if he's a guy that can carry 20 times a game. Especially coming off of an injury. I would predict and suspect that Ezekiel Elliott will be back with the Cowboys. I really think that's going to happen. Because I just don't think anybody else really wants him that much, Greg, to be honest with you. But – We'll end up seeing how it all plays out. Let's get to the New York Giants. Really curious to see what you're thinking of them. You know, I think everybody and their brother, Greg, kind of thought they would do more at wide receiver this offseason. But what they really have done, they did draft Jalen Hyatt in the third round, but the guy they really got is Waller. Yeah, and Waller is one of those guys. I mean, one of the things in in conversations I've had over the last number of years with a lot of offensive coaches in the league and and even uh, a lot of receivers coaches as well is the importance of a tight end that can line up as that boundary X, that single receiver to the short side of the field, because that very often 
dictates pre-snap looks, and it allows the quarterback to understand what the defense is going to do before the snap of the ball. And that's always what you're trying to do with your quarterback. Give him as much information possible through the use of personnel and formation before the ball is snapped, Ross. That's critical. And Waller's one of those tight ends. We've seen the Chiefs do that for years. They do it probably more than any team in the league with Kelsey. Waller can do that. Um, now, obviously, they, they made two major pickups at wide receiver. Maybe they're not the, the kind where people go, oh, my God, that's great. But they drafted Jalen Hyatt from Tennessee in the third round, and he can run. It gives them a vertical dimension. And they signed Paris Campbell, who whenever he's played, he's actually been productive. It's just he's been hurt a lot. But he's a very interesting guy who can line up both inside and outside. He can run after catch. Don't forget they still have Wandale Robinson, who got hurt a year ago, who's another guy with run after catch ability. So I think their wide receiver core, if people are healthy, is a little better than some might think. But I think Waller is absolutely critical to what I think uh, Brian Dable would like to get done. How about the defensive side of the ball for the New York Giants? Uh, they still have Dexter Lawrence. He got the big deal. Leonard Williams, I did not think, played as well last year. Maybe it was the injury. Yeah. It'll be year two for Thibodeau. They really have a chance. Now they got Deontay Banks, another man corner opposite of Adoree Jackson. Yeah, and I think Banks was a really good pickup because it's Wink Martindale, Ross, and we know what he wants to do in an ideal world. He wants to pressure and play man coverage. And Deontay Banks was as good a man coverage corner as there was in this draft coming out of Maryland. All he had to do was watch his tape against Marvin Harrison, and you saw a great matchup. I mean, he can play man coverage, um, and he can play press man. Um, and I think, you know, McKinney back, and, and he's a really good player. He fits Martindale's sort of versatile scheme. Um, they have Ashawn Robinson, who's always been a good player in this league uh, as a uh, that they signed to play on the inside. And we know what Dexter Lawrence did a year ago. He was a dominant, dominant player. And obviously, they're expecting Thibodeau to be able to win one-on-one -on -one matchups. We'll see how that progresses. But this is a very much a schemed defense. That's what Wink Martindale does. And they have better players now. Let's move on to the Philadelphia Eagles. But before we do, um, I can almost guarantee that Wink Martindale, when he wants to take things to the next level, he drinks some Labatt Blue Lights with his friends, and lives life to the power of we. Bet you almost the whole month of July, Wink Martindale's crushing Labatt Blue Lights. Always enjoy those responsibly, though, however. Beer, Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. Let's get to the Philadelphia Eagles, Greg. Uh, one of the most interesting things about them is they have two new coordinators, and they've got some new pieces on offense with – uh, Zacchaeus might end up being their slot receiver. Yep. They're going to have a new right guard one way or the other. And they've got a new uh, set of guys in the backfield, including DeAndre Swift and Rashad Penny. Yeah, but I think offensively with Brian Johnson, who was their quarterback coach a year ago, now promoted to offensive coordinator Ross, essentially schematically, you'll see the same things. Now, again, we don't know what calls he's going to make in given situations. You know, that's what fans react to. Oh, bad call, you know, good call. You, you don't know those things. But schematically, I think it'll be the same offense because it all starts with Jalen Hurts in the gun and what he forces defenses to do from an alignment perspective due to the run game element that he brings to the table. Um, you know, you're right about Zacchaeus. I think he could well win that slot job. That's, uh, you know, they, they've gone after the guys from St. Joe's Prep, uh, you know, Zacchaeus and DeAndre <laughs> Swift, you know, they're, they're, they're going to the prep, Ross, you know. So we'll see how the backfield plays out. I don't think one guy is going to get a ton of carries, although in any given week, it could be one guy getting 18, 20 carries. Look, we saw last year, Miles Sanders ended up with a lot of carries. And there were games he had 20 plus carries. I think he had 27 in one game. So we'll see how that plays out. That'll probably be an offseason training camp issue, and they'll figure that out. Um but this is a really, really good offense. You know, Hertz uh, clearly improved dramatically a year ago. You would expect him to continue to get better in the nuances and details of the position. And it would not surprise me if Tyler Steen, the rookie from Alabama, wins the right guard job. Wow, interesting. Um, you know, I'm not convinced, Greg, that Miles Sanders is a more gifted back than either Swift or Rashad Penny. I think Miles is 
stayed healthier. I think Miles is a very good player, but man, I've seen some I've seen Swift and Penny do some really impressive things. Well, I'm sure you remember it was two years ago, the last five, six weeks of the season, Rashad Penny was the leading rusher in the NFL. And he broke off long runs every single week. He's an explosive back. And with the nature of their run game, they do create space and they create holes. And and I'm fascinated to see Penny in the context of this offense because he can really take it to the house. So let's talk about defense for the Eagles, Greg. They do have a new coordinator in Sean Desai. And I think what's interesting is, man, they're pretty unproven at linebacker and safety. Nobody seems to be all that worried about it, but they lost all yeah. four starters at those positions. Well, you and I both know that Howie Roseman and, and that uh, personnel department does not place a lot of uh, – uh, input, you know, they don't place much on the linebacker position, but Nicholas Morrow has been in the league with a number of teams. And last year he had over a hundred tackles with the bears and actually played well. So he's actually a pretty interesting player. Now they're expecting the Kobe Dean to become a really good player. That remains to be seen. I know a lot of fans think it's a given that he's just going to be a great player, but he hasn't really played much in the NFL and he is undersized. So let's see how that plays out. No one really can answer that. But their D-line will be dominant. Jalen Carter will step right in, and he will start. He is a really, really good prospect. Um, the safety position is, is another position that I think needs to be worked through with the offseason and training camp. They made some signings, Terrell Edmonds. Um, uh, they, they drafted Sidney Brown. Um, Reed Blankenship came in last year and actually played very, very well. I thought he played better than just, oh, we need to put him in there because Gardner Johnson's hurt. And I, I know you studied the Eagles closely. I think you would agree. He played pretty well. So we'll see how the safety position plays out. They also drafted Sidney Brown from Illinois in the third round, a straight line explosive athlete. Last but not least, Greg, let's get to the Washington Commanders. I'm actually fascinated by this team because – you would think with new ownership and with the way the last couple of years are going, you'd think this is kind of a make or break year for Ron Rivera, Eric Bieniemy, and they're they're going with Sam Howell and Jacoby Brissett, Greg. Yeah, and I think Howell is the guy they want to play. I think they're excited about what he can bring to the table. I think that they what they want to be with Howell this year in particular is a power running football team. Um, you know, look at their backs. They have Brian Robinson. That's the kind of back he is. They have Antonio Gibson. He's that back. They drafted in the sixth round Chris Rodriguez out of Kentucky. He's sixth round pick. We don't know if he's going to make the team, obviously, but that's the kind of back he is. These are all big physical backs that are grinders more than explosive players. So I think they want to use Sam Howell. He's not Jalen Hurts as far as movement, but Sam Howell has good movement, and I think they'll probably uh, – deploy that as part of what they do offensively to enhance their run game. Um, they're pretty good at wide receiver, though, Ross. I mean, if everybody's healthy, that trio is pretty good. Curtis Samuel, Jahan Dotson, and Terry McLaurin, that's a pretty good group. So, well, you know, I think at this point, we don't know how they see what their balance will be on offense in terms of run pass, but I know that they want Sam Howell to be the guy. What about the defensive side of the ball in Washington? They still have those beasts up front, they and they sure get do. Chase Young back. Yeah, and, and I know there's a lot of uh, talk about Chase Young, whether he'll be there or not. But obviously, at his best, he's a really good player. So if he's there, you have Sweat, Payne, Allen, Young. Um, Jamin Davis improved a year ago in his second year at linebacker. He's long. He's athletic. Um, they signed Cody Barton, who'll probably start next to him to replace Cole Holcomb. And they drafted Forbes to play outside corner. And Forbes is a fascinating guy. He's a little bit of an outlier because he weighed less than 170 pounds, but he's long. He's athletic. He does play physically and competitively. And they also drafted in the second round one of my favorite players in this recent draft, Jatavius Martin out of Illinois, who had meaningful and significant snaps at Illinois playing outside corner, slot corner, and safety. And I thought he was a really, really good prospect. And it would not surprise me if he ends up playing a lot of snaps. Greg, you're not a really good prospect. You're already an established star. Excellent job as always. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate it. Greg is so good. Absolutely good. You know what else is really good these days? Max. So if you're like me, what you watch depends on what else is on TV, what kind of mood you're in. 
I like live sports. I like documentaries. Max is my first pick for winning entertainment. So if you want a comedy, which is my fave, Friends or South Park, they're all over it. If you want a drama, well, they got Succession, which Jack loves. I haven't gotten into that. House of the Dragon. Uh, my wife likes looking at the cooking shows like Chopped and Beat Bobby Flay. Then they got a ton of movies. Lord of the Rings, Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Anyway, Max is the streaming destination that has the best of entertainment for whatever mood I'm in any time. Plans start as little as $9.99 a month. Max, the one to watch. Subscription required. Visit max.com. Tux Takes. All right, Ross. We'll start with some injury news across the NFL. Jets fear that safety Chuck Clark suffered a serious ACL injury, while Colts rookie fifth-round pick Daniel Scott did, in fact, tear his ACL in the last play of OTAs and will unfortunately be lost for the whole season. Right. It's a bummer. Two safeties, too, which I think is interesting. I really liked the signing of Chuck Clark by the Jets from Baltimore. I thought, you know, he gave them some more experience and heady play on the back end there. So that was a tough loss for the Jets. That's also why they signed Adrian Amos right away. And this is this happens this time of year. Unfortunately, you know, there will be more during training camp. I think I saw where Dr. Chow, sportsinjurycentral.com, said that about half the teams will lose at least one guy to a season-ending injury before the first game. Sounds about right. Bills wide receiver Stephon Diggs posted a cryptic message on Instagram, but he does, in fact, report to practice at minicamp today on what we're recording on Wednesday. Right, and they've already canceled practice tomorrow. A lot of drama from the Bills this week. I really dislike situations like this because, and this is in general one of the flaws, Jack, with what we do, right? We don't have access to all the information. Believe me, I wish we did, but we don't. So we have to do the best to tell you what's going on and give you our thoughts based on the information that we do have. Can't say I loved Stefan Diggs' cryptic message, because I, I don't. I, I don't like cryptic messages. Just, just say, what, say what you mean. Say what you think. You know, tell him the lies, big fella. I, I, I don't know what he's talking about. I do know he was back at practice, so that seems like a positive I don't understand Sean McDermott saying on Tuesday that he was very concerned and Wednesday he said it was an excused absence. I, I don't know what Sean's talking about, but ultimately none of it really matters till we get to the first game. We can add Chiefs defensive tackle Chris Jones to the list of guys who are under contract but are skipping minicamp this week. Chris Jones is scheduled to make $19.5 million. It's amazing. Guess what? He was pretty much as good as any defensive player last year. Guys like that are making well into the 23, 25, 27, 28 million. He wants more. You know, are the Chiefs going to play hardball with by far their best defensive player? Probably not. They'll probably figure out a way to make it work. And Chris Jones is probably smart to hold their feet to the fire and Try to get more now while he still is something they can ill afford to be without. Some other defensive tackle news. The Texans gave Malik Collins a two-year $23 million with a hefty $20 million guarantee. How about that? I mean, that that was good for Malik, man. $20 million guaranteed for a couple of years for that guy. Um, I'm happy for him. He's earned it. The Texans starting to do a little bit of work on guys that they – decide that they'd like to keep around for the long haul. So kudos to Malik. You know, you'll see the next time a lot of this business will get done will be right before training camp start and then again before the regular season starts when some of this business gets done. I'm actually going to write an article, I think, for the 33rd team next week, Jack, just about how critical these next six weeks are. It's, it's the quote-unquote dead time. But it's a lot more important than people realize, especially in terms of the players, making sure they are ready to go. I am ready to go and say, everybody, have a great weekend. Hope you guys listen to the other shows or watch the other shows. We'll be back bright and early on Monday. I think we're done here. 
Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. I didn't forget. Don't worry. I didn't forget. What about Pizza Boy Brewing? Sportaculture, humanheadnyc.com, steakhousesports.com, go-bangles.com, Evergreen Economics, backofficeschedule.com, and the greatest Father's Day gift or really anniversary gift, any gift I've ever heard of, it's myfrontpagestory.com. 